Thanks for joining us again at the William Henry Studio. I'm Matt Conable, founder, lead designer, and grunt as needed. We're here for Material of the Month one more time. This month, honestly, this could be every month. There's so many layers to this particular material, literally. Uh, that was a good pun. But we're going to talk about Damascus steel, which is the, for the forging of different alloys into a three-dimensional tap tapestry for use in generally for blades. We also use it in other places as well. I'm going to give you a little bit of history before I actually, you know what, we're going to pick something up just so you can look at it. This is the biggest piece of Damascus that we can possibly get. Most Damascus cannot be forged this large, so we're going to start with the biggest piece. So this is actually Damascus steel. There's 140 layers of three different alloys forged into this piece of steel. It's made by a guy named Chad Nichols down in Alabama, I believe. He's an amazing master smith. Uh, but a little bit of history. So Damascus goes all the way back to the 5th century BC. That's how far back you go. And the original Damascus was actually called Wootz, and it was a combination of two different alloys of carbon steel folded together and then forged into blades in Damascus, which of Damascus now as part of Syria. That's where the name Damascus steel comes from. That's as far back as it can be traced. But originally, Damascus was about how do I make a better blade? How do I make a better fighting instrument, in all honesty, right? The tradition of knives is really founded in the tradition of swords. And if you have a better blade, you win the war. And in early, sort of early civilization, forging of different alloys together created a stronger and sharper blade, which meant you had a sort of a competitive advantage or a tactical advantage, I should say. So that's sort of the history. Through the ages, it showed up in different places, but again, it sort of traces all the way back to the fifth century. It's maybe most famously known in modern culture through the samurai sword. Um, and this is the Japanese taking that technique and really refining it to create, at the time, the finest edge weapons the world had ever seen. Fast forward to today, and there are some people out there forging spectacular tapestries in metal. They're high performance, two of the three alloys are great for cutting, uh, so they heat treat well, they hold a good edge, they're honable, they cut you know, razor sharp, all of those things. The third alloy in the mix is always going to be less of a cutting steel because that's what creates the contrast and the pattern when we're all done. So, Damascus. Super fun stuff. It's all, every, all the Damascus that we use is truly forged by hand. So within even any of these, any piece like this, any blade that we were to make out of it, the pattern will never repeat and can never repeat because of how it's made. It's part of the allure, the story that's being told in one specific blade out of this Damascus. It's the only story being told like that. Literally, it's the only piece that has that exact pattern. So we're talking about Damascus steel. I wanted to show you this again. These are the bigger pieces of Damascus that we get. Depends on the pattern that the Damascus maker is creating. A lot of patterns are so complex that you can't make it more than a four inch by one inch coupon or pieces that size, where one piece is gonna yield one blade or one side of a handle. When the pattern can be made bigger, and we always like it when it can, we're able to actually nest and create multiple parts. So this is what just looks like a piece of steel, but again, and this one we're actually at 190 layers. It's that thick. It's an eighth of an inch thick, and there's 190 separate layers of three alloys of steel in there. And from there, we're able to nest and blank our eight blades, which eight months later will actually be finally ready to use and, and put into a William Henry knife. So I want to zoom in a little bit because what you'll see is that we just quickly dipped part of this piece of steel into an acid solution that reveals the pattern. So you can kind of see some of that pattern starting to emerge. So this particular piece, this piece of steel is Hornet's Nest Damascus by Mike Norris in North Carolina. It's gorgeous stuff and this pattern, this Hornet's Nest pattern, He's the only guy in the world that makes it, and that's part of what makes it so fun. You're getting a piece of this amazing artisan, and each of these blades that's gonna come out of here is gonna have a pattern that can never repeat in the next one because of the hand techniques that he's developed to actually forge this steel. We're talking blade steels here. These are stainless Damascus, so all of the alloys have really good corrosion resistance once they're heat treated properly. Nice for wear and tear and all of that. Uh, but I wanna show you two more um, examples of what we actually use a lot of. A piece of steel like this, made by Robert Eggerling, um, who is truly one of the masters in the world. This stuff is so complex, I don't even know how to describe it. I don't know how he makes it. It's magic. I'm just thrilled that we get to use it. He only makes a handful of steel at this point. We get whatever we can get and we're thrilled to use it. I don't even know how many layers there are. 400? 500? It's spectacular. But what's interesting, 
just bear this in mind because we're going to show you some finished product. This is a big chunk of steel. This is what we have to start with to make one finished blade. And I'm going to show you a finished blade on an engraved piece at the next stage that features this exact piece of steel finished out. Only 75% of it has to go to waste. And I'll tell you one more thing that's kind of spectacular. It's just steel, right? Depending on the Damascus pattern, anywhere from 40 to 90% of the steel that they start with ends up as scrap on the floor because in every step and in every work, they're peeling off layers, they're sanding down, they're grinding, they're reforging, and then they're finally getting down to only a core where all of this happens and comes together. That's the value add proposition, that's the magic. And uh, here's one more piece of steel, also by Chad Nichols, it's called a rolling, ro uh, out of Alabama, it's called a rolling rock pattern. Again, I'm gonna be able to show you this on a finished, uh, on a finished frame because we'll also use Damascus on the frames or the bodies for money clips, pens, knives, and so on. I'm a knife guy. I've been a knife guy for a long time. And sometimes I like to get on a soapbox. So I'm gonna try to keep this quick. But here's the point about Damascus to me. If you have a billion dollars and you wanna buy gold, you can go out right now and buy a billion dollars worth of gold. Buy it. If you had a billion dollars and you wanted to buy Damascus, all the Damascus in the world isn't worth a billion dollars. It's so rare, there's so few people doing it, right? It's not that it's inexpensive stuff, it's that there's only a handful of artisans in the world that are even capable of doing this kind of work. Every one of them develops their own signature patterns. Within every pattern, no two pieces repeat. It's extraordinary that it's available at all. It's not about a commodity, it's about the value add of real old school craftsmanship and artisanship, and that's part of what I love about Damascus. Not only its performance, but the story behind it, the history behind it, um, the way it's permeated its way through all different cultures, because knives connect all of us. It was the er man's original tool, and guess what? We still need to open packages today. So, I think I've said enough. Thank you for bearing with me, and I want to move on to show you some finished goods that we've done with this Damascus steel. All these raw materials, all these different pieces that come together and these background stories, the point is what they actually turn into. So. Here are some finished goods from William Henry. Uh, we've got a few different things. We use Damascus all kinds of places, as many places as we can. It truly comes from the sword and the knife, um, but it's both a beautiful functional and decorative material, so we use it lots of the places. We're gonna start with the C19 Heritage. Now, this is a brand new knife for us. We just came out with it this past November, a couple months ago. The entire frame is crafted out of a heat-treated carbon Damascus and opened, the blade is a boomerang Damascus pattern. So this is a rolling rock and boomerang Damascus mix uh, with a mammoth tooth handle and the various other appointments you would expect from William Henry. So it's a beautiful thing. And I love the way it plays in the light. Item number two, this is the B10 Scarlet. This is number 41 of 50, so this is only a 50 piece limited edition. Before I show you the Damascus blade, this is a solid carnelian scale, which is a natural stone, very hard to work with. And then the bolster is actually sterling silver with overlaid 22 karat gold, all chisel carved by hand. When it opens up, what you see is another example of that beautiful boomerang Damascus. And from that last knife to this knife I'm showing now, the pattern is really quite different. Uh, it's just a beautiful thing. And of course, the uh, that one hand William Henry fun. So I'll show you one more example. This is a brand new piece for us. This is number one of five. We're getting into really rare air here. Uh, we're only making five of these. Once again, we're gonna start and kind of work our way to the blade. The handle is solid jade, uh, completely hand polished and then overlaid with traditional Japanese make a which is varying tinted gold dust powders applied in a lacquer done by a Japanese master for us. So we provide him with these jade scales and wait any number of months and he comes back with this beautiful artwork. But what we've married that into is once again a different pattern but a solid carbon Damascus frame that's been heat treated, this beautiful sort of mosaic pattern, which is more of a tiled Damascus. It's more complicated to make in some ways and you can't make big pieces. They, you can only make a piece big enough to make one handle or one side of a handle. And then opened up, we've made the blade out of that exact same steel so that that pattern continues all the way through. So once again, this is getting into rare air. This is number one of five. So moving on, I'll use Damascus anywhere I can. I love this stuff. This is our M3 money clip. This is the M3 Sunrise. 
Yes, and the entire body is made actually out of the same uh, Damascus steel that I just showed on that jade handled knife. So it's the same thing here. We've done a zinc matrix and apple coral composite with a set citrine and 14 or 18 karat gold, I believe 18 karat gold bezel. So it's just this beautiful, simple thing with a tungsten coated black stainless clip on the back. And even this one is numbered. This one is number 142 of 500. So slightly more available, but only 500 of these into the world. And it'll honestly take us about three years to make it because this Damascus just isn't available in enough quantity to move faster than that. So we also make beautiful writing instruments and occasionally, it's really a pain, but occasionally we'll use Damascus on a writing instrument. This is a very rare William Henry in that it is a fountain pen when I reveal it. So uh, titanium fittings, titanium fittings, uh, carbon fiber accents, and the entire barrel and cap is made out of a hand forged Damascus where instead of etching it, which would give you that black and white or gray and black or gray and white contrast, we've actually done a heat color on it. So we've soaked it in a kiln or done it with a torch depending on the, and so what you've got is a blue purple with that Damascus pattern revealing. And when we open it, it is a true fountain pen with an 18 karat nib that we proudly buy from a very, very fine nib maker in Germany, and we only make a handful of these. I think there's only been four of this exact fountain pen made in the last three years. Another piece from William Henry showing Damascus. So I'm gonna show you one last knife. William Henry does lots of great stuff, but we are really well known for our pocket knives. We've been making knives for 30 years, and William Henry for about 23 of those 30. This is a one of a kind piece. This is the craziness. And I wanted to show you this, it's entirely hand engraved. There's over 150 hours of hand engraving under a 10 to 50 X loop by a master engraver with custom multiple color gold inlay panels. It's just, I mean, it's a spectacular tool and it also belongs in any museum in the world. I wanted to save this for last because that big chunky piece of steel that I showed you from Robert Eggerling, that's four or 500 different layers and I can't figure out how he begins to make that pattern, but it didn't look like much, it's just chunk of steel, but that is what's in that steel. And it's, it's unreal. There's like three different sub patterns happening within the main pattern. And I am in awe. I just wanted to let that flash. And when you kind of see it flashing with the engraving, you really get that this is knife making truly elevated to an art. So another month come and gone. Thanks for joining me here at the William Henry studio. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see you back here next month for another cool material. Okay, tell me when we're, well, we are rolling. We've been rolling for a while now. And there was one more thing I wanted to say, and it was really exciting. Oh, yeah. So. Damn. See that? Yeah. A little bit of Damascus from William Henry. <laughs> 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 There's your outfit. There we go. Across his shoulder with a fragile smile